Have you ever wanted to create your own platformer game in Scratch? Well, this is a tutorial for you. In this tutorial, I'll show you the most intuitive way to code your very own platformer in Scratch with all the fundamentals and basics. Excited? Let's get started. Okay, create a new Scratch project. I'm gonna call this one Scratch Platformer. You can call it whatever you like. Let's go ahead and delete the cat sprite. Instead, we're gonna paint our own. If you have any sprite you'd like to import as the player for this game, go ahead and do so. So I'll just click paint and I'll just make a simple player sprite. Okay, there we go. Let's just go ahead and name this costume player costume. And we can go ahead and name the sprite player. Now let's create a level. So we could um, create our level as a backdrop, but the downside to that is that it won't be a sprite and won't be able to do many things. As you can see, if you go into it, the code, it doesn't have any motion blocks. It has limited looks blocks, etc. So rather than that, we're just going to make a sprite for our level and use it. So again, you can import your own level if you want um, off your computer, but I'm just going to create uh, my own level. Okay, and I think my player is just getting a little too big for this level, so I'll go ahead and downsize him a bit. One important thing you want to do with your player is make sure that he's centered around this little hook right here, and that'll just make it so his movement makes sense. If you were to put him here, um, this would be the center of the sprite, technically, even though it looks like the center might be in the middle of him, the center of the sprite is always going to be where this little thing is so let's just make sure his center and the sprite center match up and we're good to go all right first thing we want to do is make sure first of all let me just rename the sprite to level um so as you can see in the screen the level is not perfectly lined up with the playing area so we can fix that by just dragging one flag clicked and I go to zero zero. That'll just make sure it's all lined up. Let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, the level is now perfectly lined up. Okay, let's start coding our player. Let's start by creating some variables. Okay. The first variable I'm going to make is for the sprite only, and it's going to be called can jump. This is gonna control how um, our character can jump. So can jump will control if he can jump. If he's already in the air, he can't jump. So can jump will be zero. But if he's on the ground, he can jump. So can jump will be one. So make another variable, we'll call it VS speed. Again, for the sprite only. V speed is basically vertical speed and it will control the vertical distance and speed, the distance traveled by our player. And the last variable we're going to create for now is H speed, which is horizontal speed. And this will also be for the player and make sure to take for the sprite only. Okay, there we go. There are our variables. So let's just start out by turning our variables to default. Okay. So when we run the program, nothing happens, right? Because we haven't really coded anything yet. It's time for that now. Before we start, let's just make the player start where we want them to start. So let me just drag the player over here. I want them to start here. And we can see over here our X and Y. Um, so that's negative 182 and negative 60. So if we drag him in here, when we click the flag, he'll go there. Perfect. So let's start coding the actual movement of our player. So we're gonna um, have a conditional or an if statement. And we're gonna say if, and then let's just go to sensing. And we're gonna say key, right arrow pressed. So if our right arrow is pressed, 
we're gonna change HS speed, eight speed by five. Right, so if our right arrow is pressed, our H speed changes by five. Notice that we're not setting the H speed to five, so that this means we can accelerate. So the longer we're holding down the right arrow, the more acceleration we have. So for the first frame we're holding the right arrow, our H speed is gonna be five. The second frame it's gonna be 10, then 20, and then so on. So we go faster and faster as uh, we keep holding down the right arrow. But we're only doing this if statement once. So it'll only check if we're placing the right arrow at the very start of the game. We need to fix that. So just go into control and drag a forever loop. So once the game is running, the program will forever be checking if our right arrow key is pressed. What if our right arrow key is not pressed? Then we need to start slowing down, right? So actually, instead of this if, we need an if else. So go ahead and drag an if else. So if our right arrow key is pressed, we're gonna change our HS speed by five. If it's not, then we need to set our HS speed to something else. Now we could just set our HS speed to zero. So if we're not pressing it, we're not moving. But there, we need a, we can model deceleration as well. So as soon as we stop pressing it, we start slowing down instead of coming to an abrupt stalt. So to do that, all we need to do is set HS speed to H speed times 0 0.7 or 0.7. So as soon as we stop, it gets multiplied by 0 0.7, so it starts slowing down and down until it reaches a number so small it's basically zero. Great, now we can duplicate this, just uh, middle click or right click and duplicate. And we can do the same thing for left arrow key pressed. Go ahead. So we can change this to left arrow and then uh, it's still HS speed, but if our left arrow is pressed, we want to go left. So we need to change HS speed, H speed by negative five. And then uh, this block can stay the same because our H speed is already negative. Great. Now, what if we want to jump? Let's include that in. So for jump, we don't need an if else. We can just use a simple if. Uh, and I can just borrow this by duplicating it. And we'll just use up arrow pressed. Um, so if up arrow pressed, and remember, we wanna make sure our can jump variable is set to one, because if we're already in the air, we can't jump again, right? So we wanna make sure, so just drag this and we wanna make sure that can jump is one. So just also drag this equals. And then we can drag the can jump variable and if can jump is one, so we can jump and our up arrow key is pressed, then we can jump. How do we jump? Well, our H, is, H speed has been controlling our horizontal movement. What controls our vertical movement? V speed. So we set V speed to uh, 15, which will make us move upwards. And then once we move up, well, we can't jump anymore, right? So we have to set can jump to back to zero and it'll only be set to one when we reach the ground again. Okay, so now we have all of this into place, but if we run it, nothing happens. That's because these are all variables. We need to make sure these variables actually do something. H speed is our horizontal movement, but it doesn't do anything yet. It's just a meaningless variable. Let's fix that. Let's go to my blocks and just click the make a block option and we're going to call this movement and collision so this block will make all our movement happen it'll also to detect collision so this will complete our program thus far and just um tick this run without screen refresh button so you can press okay so here we have so remember it's a block so it um, if you write Python code, for example, you might know this as um, a function, defining a function. So we need to define what it does, and then we can call the block anytime, right? So first, let's define what it does. So what do, what do we want this block to do? Well, we want this block to take our H speed and V speed values and change that into real movement. So the way as I, uh, the way this collision is gonna work is 
if our h speed is 5, we, are, we aren't going to go 5 to the right. We're going to go 1 to the right 5 times. And the reason we're doing that is because if we ever hit a wall, we know, okay, we need to move one step back because the previous step, we know we weren't hitting a block. What we want to do is get a repeat. And we want to repeat for the absolute value of H speed. Right? So say our H speed is five, we're repeating this five times. If our H speed is negative five, we're also repeating it five times. So we're changing X by, uh, let me just duplicate this. The absolute value of H speed divided by H speed. Like I said earlier, we don't want to move five steps at a time. We want to move one step at a time, five times. So this models that if our H speed is five, this is a this is essentially a repeat five and then we're changing x by five divided by five so we're changing x by one so if our h speed is five we're just repeating five times change x by one great that's our movement uh done with h speed so now let's duplicate this for our v speed so it's almost the same thing it's let's take the absolute value of v speed and then instead of change x by, it's change y by. And then of course these need to be v speed blocks. Okay, great. So all that's left to do is just go to my blocks, get this movement collision block, and just call it over here. So see what happens. We start here and we can move. All right, we can move right and left. What happens if we press the up key and jump? Nothing happens. So why does nothing happen? Because if we go um, to the variables and we take can jump, it can jump is set to zero. And remember, this only triggers when can jump is one. So again, we need to fix that. But how do we fix that? How do we detect if we're touching the ground, right? In fact, we aren't even touching the ground right now. We're just moving sideways. We're not falling. So first let's detect if we're touching the ground. Which is why this block is called movement slash collision. It's supposed to detect both, which it will. So let's go ahead, stop the program. And let's uh, detect collision. So go to control and just drag an if block and let's put it inside of this repeat. Okay, so if, and then we'll go to sensing and we'll say if touching le level then remember if we're touching the level that means we've gone too far we're hitting the level now so we need to move back one so all we need to do is change x by eight speed divided by the absolute value of h speed divided by negative one that's a lot Right? So if our H speed is five, for example, it's five divided by five divided by negative one, which is negative one. Good. What if our H speed is negative five? Then it's negative five divided by five, which is negative one. Negative one divided by negative one is one. Great. So this works properly. And one final thing, if we're touching the level, we want to stop moving, right? So we need to change our H speed to zero after that set h speed to zero so we stop moving great now to just do the same thing for the v speed so we can duplicate this if and put it here and um we for this one we don't actually need this whole bit of math we can just change y by one if if we're having vertical movement over here and we touch the level that means we're on the ground, right? So over here, if, we, if we're touching the level, it means we can set can jump to one because we have vertical movement, we're touching the level, that means we've fallen down to the level. So we can set can jump to one. And uh, I forgot we need to set via speed to zero, um, just like we set h speed to zero there. 
Okay, great. Um, so let's do this. We're just still hovering over air. How do we fix that? It's actually pretty simple. Just drag this change block and put it right before movement. And we can just say change via speed by negative one. That way we're constantly falling down. And if we ever hit the ground, we just push back up. So there we go. We have, let me redo that. We, we have hit the ground and we are climbing flush against the walls. Now you saw what just happened when I jumped, right? Wow, what was that? Try again. We got stuck there. That's because we don't have any detection if our head hits um, the uh, level, right? We only have detection if our bottom hits the level. Let's fix that. But how do we detect if our head versus the bottom fits the level? We don't have a head or bottom variable. There's a simple way though. If our head hits the level, that means our via speed is positive because we're traveling up. If our feet hit the level, that means our via speed is negative because we're traveling down. So inside this if, we can just have another if. And in this if, actually an if else. And we'll just say if via speed is, v speed, sorry, is less than zero. Which means, so if v speed is less than zero, that means our feet are hitting the ground. And that's when we want this to happen. If our feet are hitting the ground, we want that to happen. If our head is hitting the ground, we just want to set our via speed to zero. We don't want to do anything else because then we'll start falling again because of this block that's constantly changing our via speed. V speed. So let's run that. Okay, and let's jump. Hooray! And so you, it's all working. We, this is the basic platform. Just um, one little thing. Uh, you might not be bothered about this, but the when you hit your head on the level, you kind of come back down a bit slowly. Um, so let's fix that. So instead of sending VSB to zero, let's just set it to negative one. So you immediately start going straight down. So it'll be a bit of a faster plummet. And as you can see, it's a bit faster. If you don't notice that, just set it to negative five or something, and it'll be extremely noticeable. You can see it's just popping us straight back down. But I think negative one or negative two should be good. Great, we've got all this set up. This is the basic platformer. Um, so make sure to watch out for part two where we add items you can collect and much more levels to make this game so much more exciting.